Welcome everyone to the 181st episode of Politically High Tech with your host Elias. In this episode, we are, we, I mean by we, you and me listeners, now let's forget that. I'm going to talk about a couple of issues that greatly affects technology and politics. I have three articles that I'm going to read to you. Two of them is from the new paper and I'm going to share that in link below okay below of which one rather you're listening or watching this you're gonna get the same link join that that is a very very quick news with zero political spin if you want to know this, if you want to get the source from it just click on the link the link right there after you read the little headline this is a good way to get information without the left wing, right wing noise and spin that you normally get. Okay. And then the, my third source would be from Axios. I got that from outside of the new paper. But this is about technology, business, and politics really, really meshing together. So your first item is going to be about a Danish company that has been severely impacted by the Houthis. So this is a serious thing. And the oil crude prices. Yep. The stock market that you use your smartphone to see, the prices go up and down. Yep. It impacts that immediately. They're interconnected. They are very, very interconnected. And then the second story, which is an interesting one, is about Russia. Removing debt from Google, Meta, and TikTok. They remove debt. We're going to find out why. We're going to find out why. And they have put fines on still a couple of companies, but their debt's been removed from the Russia database. This is weird. We're going to learn a little bit about it, okay? And then for the third and final item, we're going to go through Elon Musk. Yep, the tech, the entrepreneur, businessman who really, really, I mean, shape political discourse. Rather you like him or hate him, right? Rather you really like him or hate him. That, that's irrelevant. Major impacts are going on, both for better or worse. That's up to you how you sit on it. The left generally is critical of him. The right generally praises him. That's just your political synopsis of it, okay? So in this episode, we're going to go through three items. Again, three items. Now let's get to the first one. This one's affecting your stocks. The one you use your smartphone these days or your laptop, whatever technological device or your television, if you want to be very traditional about it. Maersk, probably butchering the name, but it's a Danish company that's been heavily impacted by the Houthis and that tell you about this in the last episode i mentioned a short i give you a short reference of the houthis the the yemen rebel group okay they ship oil they, they move oil through the red seas and they've been attacking they sunk a couple of ships yeah they attacked four they sunk three of them they have killed crews and these are commercial ships these are not warships that have guns and all that but that's but u.s has um warships that they're even navy copters just to surveil and attack the houthis they're backed by iran once again so this is the political part and they're going to continue to investigate this because this is crazy vessels have to re i mean this is to the point that most vessels has rerouting they are Virtually encircling Africa. The Red Sea served as a shortcut for a West from Asian countries and European countries just to ship whatever goods. But now the Red Sea is so dangerous, they have to essentially just pick, just have a map in your head, right? They have to encircle most of Africa just to deliver the goods to the West. If it's to the East, not as problematic, except if you start hitting Ukrainian Russian waters because of war. Okay. So 12% of global trade happens through there, and about 3 million barrels of oil pass through. So that's a lot of oil. That's a lot of oil. It's very horrendous what's going on. And this is why I agree. This is why I agree with military action because these they don't take no for an answer. You don't. You don't negotiate with wild people like that. Yeah. So it's very horrendous what's going on. And this is going to jack up prices on oil. Okay. Oil is going to go up. And how? what's the percentage of oil that went up? Even though they deny it has something to do with it. Um, that price just went up by 2%. Okay. But they gave up those gains. The U.S. crude oil went down from 82 cents. 
to now, yeah, now it's, yeah, it was about $72. Now they're down to about 71 if you round it up. Brent, an, another oil company through Europe, lost 68 cents. And so they're losing money. And it may not sound a lot, but that's per tray at a barrel. And so they're losing a lots and lots of money. And yeah, I mean, don't, expect, don't be surprised if certain things start going up. Inflation will get hot again because of that. I just want you to, to grasp that. Oh, this is why these conflicts matter you know one may say oh i don't care about all of that well you're not going to care about prices and then you're going to complain why prices go up and wonder why well because of stuff like that when the markets don't feel safe they take a nose dive and now since they to do more work just to deliver the goods and the oil of course prices are going to jack up it's far riskier okay it's very very bad very 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 bad now for this one's more of an odd news. This has to, this has to do with Russia. Debts are being removed uh, among the big tech companies. Fines were first imposed by Russian courts. Um, Google, YouTube, Meta, TikTok, or even Telegram. Yeah, the more private than um, email service. They have settled, and they they are no longer late. They are no longer debtors to the Russian state, but it still has. Twitter, I'm not going to call it X, Twitch, which it equates to 51 million U rubles. That equates to over $560,000 in USD, US dollars. And then Twitch is about 23 million rubles, which is close to $253,000. They didn't receive a whole lot of comments. So there's not a lot of information here. From the invasion, they've been blocked because for them, they're going to spread misinformation. Yeah. I mean, Russia is a propaganda state. I mean, all countries do propaganda. Even the United States does propaganda. No offense some people to say it, but U.S. even does its own propaganda. And of course, they have posed bigger fines on Google, which is 4.6 billion rubles. That's about nearly 50 and a half million dollars in USD. They've been they've been labeled as extremists. Well, their tactic to rebuild USSR is extremist, okay? And the big thing that they did this was because according to them they have failed to store data locally. This is the only thing I have to agree with them on cuz these companies are notorious for making your data sellable, accessible, and spreadable. Okay, they're known for this. So, you know, I'm, I don't agree the whole block thing, but they're not known to locally store stuff. We have super clouds, all those other weird technology to store data, but you get sell to advertisers, and this is how they make money. This is how they have made billions and billions of dollars. Okay. Yeah, they were blocked, but they've been removed. They must have set this behind closed doors and. You're probably not going to know the details for this until later on. And just to give you a bit of uh, an exchange rate, okay? One U.S. dollar equals 91.26 rubles. Yep, the U.S. dollar is still pretty damn strong. But that this kind of changes. It's, it's a dynamic kind of information. So by the time you get this recording, this information could be a little off, Okay. So that's all I got for that one. Now we're going to go through the whole Elon Musk thing. And you know he's a tech innovator. His cause, he's a hero to some and a villain to others. Okay, And he has really innovated rocketry since World War II. They've been sending people to space through SpaceX. Okay. It even has is even provides commercial satellites, and that even includes the Pentagon as a client. Yes, yeah, so I have a government client, and SpaceX is heavily relied upon by Ukraine. I mean, I don't think there's another CEO CEO that could just cut someone's satellite in the middle of the war. Yeah, and of course Tesla. He's found a way to lower costs by gigacasting. What is what does gigacasting mean? It means is using large house size machine. Parts of mold the front and rear structures. Instead of using so many little intricate parts, in other words. Rivals are now trying to catch up. Toyota is trying to take that idea and implement it from Tesla. Um, they're 
slashing cost production. Hopefully those cars get cheaper and affordable. And hopefully you have a lot more electric charging stations for those cars. And then we're going to talk about the more controversial part. Well, Tesla is pretty controversial itself, to be honest. Not a big fan of it. But I'll tell you one thing. He's been shifting people away from using gas-powered cars. And it's, more, it's better, more according to scientists, more environmentally friendly than even the hybrid car. Okay. And of course, Elon Musk with his freedom of speech, freeing Alex Jones, the wildest example, the wildest cat, okay, out of all of them that he's already freed. He has caused a lot of advertisers, a lot of big names, some of Apple, Walmart. They've left. And remember when he gave the finger to them, verbally saying it a couple of times because he felt threatened. And then X to be trusted as a news source has been slipping. Yeah, among certain group of people. I mean, I don't treat that as a source unless I really, really, really have to. I mean, I don't really cite Twitter as a source unless other medias have verified it and medias that don't have that much stake in the game. But I'll tell you one thing. Elon Musk is interesting. I'm not a big fan of him, but he did. He, he does. He's an innovator. He's not afraid to take risks. I can respect that in a way. I can actually respect that. Why am I telling you all of this? Why? Because if you want to be a climate change advocate, find a way to get a Tesla. Make sure your city has a charging station, okay? And the Houthis, well, just be ready to search for deals, especially with oil, because oil and in any in a lot of goods, they're just going to go up. I'm just bringing this to your attention. You got to use more effort to find better deals. Just don't be surprised with prices of some things go up because of that. Okay. And then and the whole Russia thing, that's definitely more for your information. That's your information to see how global companies are treated with international players like europe is much stricter in general they fight hard to protect their citizenry you know a little bit of an anti-free speech but at least they fight for the consumer i will say harder than the u.s and just in case for you if you're listening in russia i don't think most of you are I won't be surprised this podcast was even blocked. You managed to listen to it. Amen. When there's a will, there's a way. And Russia is part of a group that is trying to counter the U.S. dollar dominance. This is Russia-Ukraine war is sadly still going. All I'm going to say is just be careful with the propaganda. I mean, they don't want U.S. big tech to be involved unless they comply with their rules. And, you know, especially if you have a friend in Russia or Ukraine, God help them. I'll be praying for them, really. Just add a little spirituality. And and for those who are in, even the Red Sea, I ought to extend my prayer to to those people as well because they are in danger some are already killed some u.s people commercial people because these rebels they're just inserting their dominance disrupting global trade from the red sea region affecting prices okay they're infecting infecting they are affecting prices listen to me i can't even speak they're affecting prices i'm just all I can say for you is put God, and this is something that I have, I used to struggle with for a long, long time. Let's end off here. Just try to put God in first place. He'll make change. He'll make moves that you don't even think it's possible. That's why he's God. He sits on the throne, okay? That's all I can say, because this year, it's going to be chaotic. If we stay calm during the storm, you'll be just fine. All right, so let's wrap up this chaos the direct the indirect chaos so price so prices were affected because the houthis attacked a danish ship called mers hangzhou okay they sunk three boats killing the crews in the process they are essentially pirates in a lot of ways of the 21st century taking them down and they let pause all and it's causing businesses to rethink and even pause shipment because of this so if you ordered something from denmark it's rare i don't think most americans do that but if you order something from denmark it's going to take a while it's going to take a while google meta tiktok they said tiktok's debts their debt has been settled and some companies still have problems and they're saying that it has unlawful content any content criticizing russia and fair to store user data okay and they post heavy, heavy fines that they're racking in billions of rubles, which is 
translates to millions in U.S. dollars. Like Elon Musk has um, innovated, okay, with space travel, cars. Not sure about X, aka Twitter. I said I was going to call X, I ended up doing it anyways. X slash Twitter has went through problems and with the, with the mass exits of ads just going away. They don't want to deal with this stuff anymore. They really don't. And rocketry hasn't been innovated since World War II. That's huge. It was stagnant in space. You know, we were it's just World War II, but our greatness wasn't really demonstrated to the Cold War. And that's what Cold War was about. And they even innovate the production cars using gigacasts, using larger parts, fewer larger parts, just to make their car instead of bunch of small intricate parts okay um he knows how to reshape things he's an innovator he's not afraid to take some risk i give him that that's what i'm gonna say so all right that's all i got for you this episode was pretty short if you enjoyed this episode give a like share share with your family or friends who could benefit from this also comment give some feedback in this podcast give some i really appreciate it give some feedback and if you're listening to this through apple podcast or spotify give me a star rating i know for spotify i recently learned shamefully admit that you only can give a star rating i first give your star based on your conscience i prefer five star obviously but just put that you can't put comments, but with the Apple one, you could definitely put a star rating and add some comments. So far, I've got a couple of five-star ratings. I appreciate those with some compelling feedback. They have fun. They find it informative. Okay. That's all I'm going to say to you. So for whenever, wherever you listen to this podcast, you have a blessed day, afternoon, or night.